Guess what? You too can create this incredible amethyst geo design. Even if you're a beginner, it's really not that hard. All it takes is a lot of patience and time. So let's not waste another minute and just dive right in. So the products we're, we're using to make this amethyst geode is a no wipe thick gel. So whether that's a hard gel, this one happens to be a jewelry gel. You can use a gem gel, you can use anything that's gonna be a thick no wipe. And you, we're going to be thinning that out a bit with a no wipe top coat. And I'm gonna be using a matte top for my ink. For inks, we're gonna be using the Apre 7, Apre 18, and the White Apre. Typically, I like to use the EV Nails Ink White. That's really bold, and in this case, we're just going for a smoky effect. We don't need it that bold. Also using the Luxa Polish Hines Flakes, and the Luxa Polish White Art Gel. It's an art gel. To start off this design, we need to create our clear textured crystal geode. First thing, I prep the underside of the tip with a pre prep and primer, just as I would the top. We're going to work from underneath the nail using a thick no wipe gel. I'll be using Barbie Mirage Jewelry Gel from Beauty Finique, which is a thick no wipe jewelry gel, but any type of thick no wipe gel will work the same. We're going to layer in a decent amount of the no wipe gel, just thick enough so that you can kind of smush it all around. To get that crystallized look, we're going to push some crinkled up plastic wrap into the gel and then just use your tweezers to move it around to try and create the look of cracks and crevices. Take a look through the tip and when you like what you see, you're going to put it into the lamp and just give it a cure. Once it's cured, we pull the plastic wrap out and use tweezers to clean out any bits that are left hanging around. Final step is to file any bits that are sticking out and just generally clean it all up as much as possible. There will likely still be pieces of plastic that you can't remove, but don't worry about them as it won't be at all noticeable when you're wearing them. Be sure not to top coat it as that would ruin the crystal effect that we've just created. Now that we finished the crystal, we move on to the amethyst design. Start out with is making a little mixture here. And that is using our No Wipe Jewelry Gel. We're gonna be making quite a bit. Now this design does tend to be thick. The trick of it is to try and create it as thinly as possible. Keep your layers as thin as you can as you go. Unfortunately, it's just the nature of the design that in order to get the really interesting depth, it's gonna require layers and layers. And then of course at the end, it will require encapsulation. So you just have to do your best to keep it as thin as you possibly can. And that's kind of the trick of it. So we're going to mix this up. And we're going to be doing three sections. Some is going to be clear, some black, some purple. So we mix up our inks. Okay. And what I want to do, well, when I compared the two crystal 
bits that I had, I tried to make sure that each nail was going to be opposite so they have a smoother look to them. So I checked it out and found there's a really good crystal looking section here. So we're going to surround that to make our clear crystal geode. So you just go in and you pick up your mixture. You want to mix it in. It's just something that's kind of sitting on top there. And what you're doing with this is you're floating as opposed to painting on. So it's a bit tricky trying to keep it thin yet floating the product as opposed to painting it. I decided I want to make this a bit bigger here. I'm just going to get some clear and kind of push it. how three-dimensional that ends up so I want to kind of smooth some of it out you don't want your color too dense because the idea is to have layers to give it some depth wispy in there. And that's what we're looking for. So keeping it as thin as possible. And yet putting that wispy color in there. for a transition. I'm gonna move a little bit more of this purple. Make this geode section a little bigger. It's a little clear and you're just gonna go in Try and kind of transition between the purple and the black, just so you don't have a severe line. Just kind of smooth out that transition, makes it a little more. Remember what we're going for organic. And then we'll give this a cure. And before I cure, I'm actually gonna go in with a little cleanup pick with a bit of alcohol on it. See if I can't take some of this purple coloring away. It'll still look really good. I'm just finicky. And I like the idea of more of the crystal look. To really give you that sense of depth between the, of the clear crystal. I 
and so I'll give that a cure. And now that it's finished curing, we're going to go in with some of these flakes. And we're going to focus on the transition layer. For transition between the two, I'm just going to make a little dab of top coat just to give them something to stick to. And we're just putting them into the tacky layer, focusing on that transition between the two colors. Don't want to go overboard on the flakes, but a nice amount gives them a really cool look underneath. For this particular flake mix or color, I find that putting it on the purple works the best because as you can see the color, like they're looking kind of yellowy, greeny there, but once they're on the purple and once you coat over them with the next layer, because we're going to do a few more layers, really brings out the purple color, the purpley blue. So more on the purple, a little less on the black, because on the black it brings out the yellowy, greeny kind of color. You don't get quite as much as that purple look. So, there we go, that should be good. You want to press them down. I do not use my glove for doing this, or doing that, uh, because I want to get as little gel polish onto my gloves as possible. Having allergies means being extremely careful when I'm working so that I'm getting as little polish transfer on things as possible. Having an allergy to gel products is no funny business. It can be extremely severe and in a case like mine it can damage your career. Take you from being a tech to not really having that option anymore. So, okay. So there we go. You can see got a nice look of flakes. Check out if there's any spots I want to add. Looking good. Okay. So then we're going to go in with our second layer. And again, Working as thinly as possible, but yet trying to get that color in there, and that layer. You can see even just layering it, how the ink changes as it goes on. I have lots of different brands and colors of alcohol inks and out of the tons of different purples that I have, this Apre number no. 7 is the one that I found to match with like True Amethyst the best. Although sadly I don't know if they still make their inks anymore. I've heard that that might not be something you can still purchase or if you can it's at distributors who still happen to have it in stock and again remember we're working as thin as we can but unfortunately it is going to thicken up this that's just the nature of this particular style of design so you just do the best you can with it So 
you're gonna go ahead and go in with your white again, or sorry, your clear. And at this point, we're going to not only smooth out the transition, but we're also going to come in here into the geode, the crystal part, and we're just going to pull a little bit of that purple color. Just to make it a little bit more of a natural transition and you don't want to go all the way into your center just a touch and smoothing out that transition but still keeping a nice solid clear crystal in there and then moving into smoothing out your purple and black. So we still want that more sheer see-through effect, but still with the layers, layers of color. So again, into the lamp. Okay, and then out of light, and we're going to do our third layer at this point. You can add a few more flakes if you want. The nice thing about these is that they are organic, so you can kind of play with them however you want. And that last layer in there. there's really not a right or wrong way for it you just kind of keep layering and playing with it until you like it and truly this design is quite simple it's just really time-consuming especially if you're like me where you end up kind of getting caught up in the fiddly stuff. But if not, if you're not like me, then you could probably whip this off rather quickly. Again, your transition does not need to be perfect. We will be going over it with some quartz look detailing. So you can easily blend that along with your details when you do them. All right. So that's the last layer for that. We'll put it in the lamp. Okay, so we're out of the lamp. That was our final layer for that. What we're going to do now is a matte top. and A matte top so that we can layer down our ink. Got that out of the lamp. And what I'm just going to do quick before uh, doing my detailing is I am just going to do a little edge cleanup. Nothing drastic because this isn't going to be 
anything final, we will encapsulate and redo this. But the reason I'm doing this is that I found because it does get so kind of gloopy on the edges and and there is quite a rough surface that I often have difficulty not taking away some of my designs on the edges when I try and thin them out. So by taking a little bit of the edge off first, there won't be as much there when I encapsulate it. And there won't be as big of a risk of taking off some of the edge work with the details. again nothing fancy just a quick little kind of edge cleanup this might not be something that you want to bother with but the edges do tend to start getting a little thick if you're really careful with it when you're working you'll notice it and <laughs> maybe you won't thicken up the edges as badly as I do but This way there's less chance of losing some of those details on the edge when I go and do my final filing after encapsulating. The other option you could do is encapsulate at this point and then uh, do your fine detail work and then just top coat. That actually might be kind of ideal. So I've got my white ink, I've got a little dappin dish, I've got my FX gel solution that I find is my go-to when using alcohol inks. Whatever magic they have in there, it just seems to work so much better than strictly alcohol or um, acetone or whatever your liquid of choice is. So with the ink, we're just going for like a smoky effect. Not trying to get any kind of, sorry, real details in there, just that kind of smoky lines. Usually I don't have to work line by line like this, but some reason this ink hasn't been playing well the way I wanted it to and if I leave it there for too long the lines get really distinct and I don't want that so so instead I'm working slowly line by line Typically, you don't have to do that, especially when using the FX solution. And there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Just play around with it until it looks cool, like you like, like that kind of swivel there that ended up looking really neat. We're still going to be going in with our white art ink to do our fine line detailing, so I'm not worrying too much about anything like that right now. let it set for a second and then I'm going to be putting another matte top coat over it so that we can do our final step well final design step which is our white art ink real quick before we get to that if you're enjoying this video and want to see more 
please help me grow my channel by subscribing and hitting that like button so it can spread to more people. I would truly appreciate All it. Alright, and last step before encapsulating is that we want to go in with our white art gel. And literally just kneading just one swoop of it and then onto our palette we just want to run it to load the brush and keep it really thin get off any Lumps that might be on there and then kind of have a look and see where you want it we don't want our lines to be straight we want them to be kind of jagged jittery think of rock cracks We will be going in to manipulate them a bit so at that point we can kind of shift them around if we want to. Okay. So I'm just going to get a round brush and a wee bit of matte top on my palette for smudging and the only thing I recommend when you're doing these types of quartz lines is that you want one side to be straight and not messed with and then pick your other side that you're going to smudge it down And keep it the same all the way down that particular crack so whichever piece you're working on go all the way down with it don't flip sides and it just doesn't quite have as natural look this is where I can tend to spend entirely too much time fussing around with it. You want to pay special attention to your corners where they meet up so that it doesn't get kind of too thick in there. And you want to gradually bring that color down and smoothed out. There isn't a sharp line. You don't want these lines to be too stark or stand out too strong. Finally, just going through and making sure that all your transitions are nice and smooth. Your work looks kind of natural and organic. And it's good to have areas where some of it's darker and some of it's lighter. Again, it makes it more look more organic. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think so. I'll put that in the light. 
So now to encapsulate. Here's my, here's my Adam Glam Builder Gel. Thought while the nail is thicker than typical, it's not outrageously so. I do find it a little tricky to fill in that divot from the crystal and keep it all smoothed out. So if you want to work a little bit thinner and do a second coat of encapsulation just to level it off better without going overboard, that might be the way to go. Or use a harder gel. I'm going to pop that in the lid. Now I'm going to remove this cushion layer. Get rid of all the tackiness so that we can file and buff it. So I start with a 180. close attention to keeping our edges nice and sharp in the case of a coffin or a square. We don't want to end up with that rounded corners. You can see, see there we still kept it Fairly thin, hasn't got overly thick. I'll just keep plugging away at this until I'm happy with it. If you're like me and you just want to make sure that you're not going too deep down into your design, you can give it a dust and a cleaning and kind of take a look, make sure that it's not starting to touch. I can see I can take a lot off more here, a lot more off here. I just want to avoid filing to the point where I end up taking away some of my finer details from the top, but yet yeah, you want to get it as thin as possible. I've switched down to my finer 240 so that I'm not taking away too much bulk at a time so I don't run the risk of doing any damage to the fine details on top. There, it's starting to look better. This process can be a little tedious if you don't do a lot of filing, which is doing press-ons. You don't tend to file that much. So it is a bit of a learning curve again to make sure that you're not removing what you want to keep and you're only removing the extra bulk. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with my filing. I've dusted. And I'm going to go in with my dime nails. Glossy. It's just amazing for crystal designs. And watch the reveal.
and that's how you spend an hour and a half doing an amethyst geode. <laughs>